Good evening and welcome to this broadcast of the Crossroads Bible Study from Jotnil. I'm so glad that you have tuned in with us and it is my prayer that the Lord will bless us together tonight. We have made good progress with the Crossroads 1 Bible Study. The first four parts was growing in God, anchored in God, reflecting Jesus, Jesus' life and legacy, and then fifthly, which uh, we started with last night, is about the gifts of the Spirit. But before we continue, let us just close our eyes in prayer. Father, thank you for this great privilege that we can gather in the name of Jesus Christ as your children. Even though there is a physical distance between us, in the Spirit we are united in your name because you are omnipresent. Thank you that you will bless us and that we will receive what you want to give us tonight. We pray for the streams of living water flowing, that we will drink from it and be quenched and to experience your glory and your joy in our hearts. We thank you in Jesus' name. Tonight we will continue with the manifestation gifts. The Greek word for manifestation is to make something visible or even proof of something. I want to tell you a testimony from when I was young, about 15 years old. We heard about a lady who would come to visit us that night and we were wondering what this lady, old lady could tell us and I was greatly surprised and grateful for the lady that Lord sent and she told us about an experience she had, she was working at home, busy cleaning and the Lord spoke to her in her heart to say that she had to go to a certain hospital in Pretoria and she thought this is my own thoughts but the Lord convinced her and she realized she had to go and she prepared and she drove to the hospital when she got there she asked Lord where, where to now and in her heart the Lord told her go down this hallway go left there right there and she followed as the Holy Spirit was leading her because as the scripture said that you will hear a voice behind you to tell you where to go and she experienced this and as she came to her room there was two ladies laying in their beds and with the one lady her husband was sitting in a chair next to the bed and the Lord led her to this couple and she spoke to the husband asking what is wrong with his wife and he replied that she was in a coma for three months already and he is watching over her and she asked whether she can pray for the lady and he agreed and she laid her hands on the lady and she prayed for her and she came with and she started sharing with this lady it was so real for this man that he couldn't understand how this could happen after three months and as an introduction to manifestation gifts and healing and it was so real and he told her well my one leg is shorter than the other can't you pray for me as well and she agreed and she placed his two legs on a chair and she could see how the one was shorter than the other and as she was praying for the man she saw the one leg growing past the other growing back and it stabilized at the same length and as a young boy I realized the reality of the divine healing of the Lord and I realized that the Lord is almighty and he can trust the Lord with anything and she went to the other bed and this lady was hospitalized for migraine headaches and the lady asked whether she can pray for her as well and she agreed and I know how serious migraines could be 
as my sister passed away due to migraine related things so she went away and after a time about two weeks she returned to the hospital and the room was empty but she met this lady in the hallway the one who had the migraines and she asked how it was going and the lady replied that from that day she never had a migraine again and it became a reality to me that the gifts of the spirit is something that we do in faith because the Lord is doing the work we are only the instruments and he receives all the glory it doesn't mean that for every prayer it will happen as I want it to be but if he wants to the Lord can do it and through this we can glorify his name and this testimony became a milestone over many years for me to realize that the Lord truly exists how could this be possible if he didn't and so I could grow in the spirit as well firstly we will be looking at the manifestation gifts in the first slide we see the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit the organization of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1st Corinthians chapter 12 to 14 deals at length with the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in order to correct the abuses that were taking place in the church he lays down clear principles for the correct use of the gifts in the church the first category of spiritual gifts we need to discuss are the gifts of the Holy Spirit that Paul lists in 1st Corinthians 12 verse 7 to 11 now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between Spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues all these are the work of one and the same spirit and he gives them to each one just as he determines the power of the holy spirit at work in christians through the gifts of the spirit was the key to the dynamic progress of the early church and it remains essential to the spiritual growth of the church today the gifts of the Spirit are God's chosen means of empowering His church for ministry. Christians have fallen into two opposite but equally harmful errors with reference to the gifts of the Spirit. As we heard last night, some churches ignore them. Fearing the possible abuse of the gifts, they make no room for the Holy Spirit to work in their midst and in so doing quench the Spirit. This produces a sterile form of Christianity that has a form of godliness but lacks the power of God. Other churches abuse them. In their desire for the power of God, they allow all kinds of strange manifestations with no means of controlling them in an orderly manner. How should we as Bible-believing Christians respond to these errors? First, we should eagerly desire spiritual gifts pursuing love although we should recognize the danger that the gifts might be abused the solution is definitely not to avoid the gifts altogether we need the power of God to do the work of God the Bible warns us not to despise spiritual gifts in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19 it says, Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Second, we must ensure that the gifts operate within the boundaries that the Bible lays down for them. The list in 1 Corinthians 12, to understand this, we have to realize the bigger context. 
The Apostle Paul devotes three chapters, 1 Corinthians 12 to chapter 14, to discussing the value and proper functioning of spiritual gifts in the life of the local church. A thorough study of these chapters reveals several basic principles about the use of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Then when we look at the next slide, the gifts operate in a ministry context. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 26 we read, What then shall we say, brothers? When you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. All of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. The treatment of the gifts is set in the broader context of corporate worship. While discussing what should happen when the church meets of worship, Paul lays down guidelines for the proper operation of the gifts in a way that will build up the entire church. This does not limit the manifestation of spiritual gifts to church meetings though. Since they are the Spirit's tools for building up the body of Christ, they could and should operate in any context where ministry is needed. The most natural and common setting for them to operate is in the context of corporate worship. Then at the next slide. The gifts belong to the Spirit, not to the servant. We read in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 and 11. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. All these things are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. There are two views of the gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12. One view holds that the Holy Spirit gives these gifts to a believer, and that from then on the believer possesses and uses the gifts that they have received. The other view holds that these are manifestations of the Spirit that He releases through believers at His discretion as needed for ministry. The fact is that the gifts themselves always remain the property of the Holy Spirit and He distributes the manifestation of them as He chooses. Looking at the next slide, the gifts are released for the edification of the church. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The purpose of the gifts of the Spirit is to build up the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit, who knows needs, gives whatever gift is needed to strengthen the church at that time. Reading in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 12. Since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in gifts that builds up the church. There should be a strife, but it should be to the common good of the church and the congregation we are in. The fact that the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13 is slotted right in the middle of the two chapters on spiritual gifts are no accident. Since the goal of the gifts is to build up the church, the only valid motivation for operating in the gifts is love. The gifts are worthless without love. Christians who love the church will seek the gifts of the Spirit so that they can strengthen their follow fellow believers. The gifts are an expression of love, not a sign of spirituality. When I was converted as a young man, came to conversion about at the age of 23, I spoke to a Christian in another church and he told me he came to conversion as well. And I replied, well, this is wonderful. And very proudly he said, well, I am speaking in tongues. And this was a great young man and I loved him. But for him it was an achievement to speak in tongues. But we know that even though we speak in the languages of angels, it is something that the Holy Spirit gives to us. It's not an achievement. It is something that he entrusts with us and he gets all the glory. Jesus should be the focus through the working and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
on the next slide, the gifts must be used in an orderly manner. In 1 Corinthians 14, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the control of the prophets, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. Therefore, my brothers, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. And then on the next slide, the gifts are released through desire and faith. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Unless you eagerly desire God to use you in the manifestation of spiritual gifts, you'll probably never operate in them. Part of the reason for this is that you have to cooperate with the Lord in the exercise of the gifts of the Spirit. This cooperation in the greater context is just the same as the Lord is leading in the congregation in the church. When someone spoke to me and he said that he wants all the gifts to operate through him, and he has certain gifts, but I saw that in his mind it is not for the edification of the church. And I told him that the secret does not lie in how much you could give, but how much you can hold back so that you can be used in the leading of the Holy Spirit. And this does not mean that you will always receive the gifts that you desire. You may desire to operate in the gift of healing, but the Holy Spirit may choose not to use you in this gift. That is his sovereign right. The point is simply that you must desire to be used by the Holy Spirit and be alert to his prompting. If you are sensitive to his leading, it is likely that he will sometimes choose to use you when he wants to minister to someone. Along with desire, responding to the Holy Spirit requires that you step out in faith. If we look at the classification of the gifts of the Spirit, firstly you will see on the slide vocal, prophecy to say something, then tongues and interpretation of tongues. Secondly, power gifts, faith to do something, healings and miracles. And then revelation gifts, wisdom to know something, knowledge and discernment or the discernment of spirits. There are nine gifts of the spirit. There are more, but we are looking just at these nine. They divide logically into three groups of three gifts. We will be focusing on the power gifts and the revelation gifts tonight. Power gifts, faith, a special deposit of faith to overcome a particular problem. Healing, God's supernatural intervention, intervention to cure health problems. Miracles, a manifestation of God's power to control or overrule the laws of nature. The Holy Spirit is doing something tangible on the physical realm, whether solving a problem, healing a sickness, or suspending a natural law. If we look at faith, a special deposit of faith that the Lord gives us to trust Him to overcome a particular problem or crisis. It is the supreme inner assurance that although the situation looks impossible, God not only can, but he also will intervene. And this is where we get milestones. The scripture calls him the Lord of hope. And this faith we have in him and trust that he will work out a situation in his will. We are his children. We can ask him and he will answer us according to his will. And we can read in Romans 15, verse 13. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. 
then we will look at healings, the Holy Spirit's cure for physical ailments and diseases. Gifts of healing often manifest when the gospel is preached to the unsaved, but they can also manifest in any situation where a believer needs healing. Many of us know and saw how the Lord healed people, and there are many references in scripture as well to it. We heard about this lady who prayed for a person and his leg grew. And for the Lord, everything is possible. But many a time in a situation where someone needs healing to be able to do the Lord's work, or even where a young believer, um, their faith has to be strengthened, or even where people should come to conversion, the Lord uses the gift of healing. Mel Tari, I have read his book, Like a Mighty Wind, from Indonesia. It is interesting how he came to conversion. As he was very, a very knowledgeable man, the spiritual things didn't really make sense to him until the Lord took him through a process where he saw and experienced things where he could come to faith. And so the Lord worked with him and they started a ministry and they went to a, a rural tribe and as they came to this tribe a person was lying underneath a tent who was deceased for three days already and the Lord led them to stand around this deceased in a group and praising the Lord in song and about with the fourth song this person came back to life because the Lord chose to do it this way. And on that day, more than 24,000 people came to conversion because of this reality of what they experienced. So the healing gift is also there to strengthen faith and to glorify the Lord. It is never the instrument that receives the glory, but always the Lord. We have different ways of how we see the Lord working in the scripture we can read how clothes of people um, was placed on the sick and they were healed we can read this in Acts 19 verse 11 and 12 and God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick and their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. The Lord works as He wills. If we look at miracles, a supernatural manifestation of the power of God that alters, suspends, or in some other way controls the law of nature. Jesus performed such miracles as walking on water, turning water into wine, feeding more than 5,000, the early church also experienced miracles. An angel released Peter and John from prison, and Paul um, survived a venomous snake bite. And these are miracles that also strengthen our faith. Just to share another testimony, my parents was working in our old age home, Emmanuel, and on one day the milk um, was finished. And as she was dishing up the milk from a plastic container, she had to tilt it over to get the last bit out. And there was a whole queue of people who still had to receive milk. And she prayed for the Lord to increase the milk. And from the walls of this container, she saw milk flowing. And she was, she was dishing up from this container one two, three, until five jugs full of milk. And when the last person received their portion, the flowing of the milk in the container also stopped. The laws of nature, which he overrides and does miracles through this, we can trust the Lord because he is almighty. Looking at the revelation gifts, The Spirit reveals the best course of action to take in a particular situation. Knowledge, 
the Spirit reveals a piece of information that you could not know by natural means. And then discernment, the Spirit reveals which Spirit is at work, God's, man's or Satan's Spirit. In the Revelation gifts, the Holy Spirit reveals something. Through these gifts, the Holy Spirit shows us either a problem or a solution to a problem. Often they operate together. First, he reveals the source of the problem, which is a word of knowledge, and then he reveals the way to solve this problem, a word of wisdom. Often this involves discernment of spirits. These gifts are essential for counseling, teaching, and leading. Looking at a word of knowledge, the Holy Spirit reveals certain information you could not know by natural means. Often, when we are praying for someone, the Lord will reveal certain facts that we could not otherwise know. Things in the person's past life or present circumstances. And this piece of information is a word of knowledge. Looking at a word of wisdom, the Holy Spirit reveals the best course of action to take in a particular situation. Often when we are counseling or praying, the Lord will reveal what we should do. And this is a word of wisdom. Wisdom is applied knowledge, whereas the word of knowledge answers the question, what has happened? The word of wisdom answers the question, what should we do now? Looking at discernment of spirits, the Holy Spirit reveals which spirit is at work, that is, whether something is of God, the devil, or the flesh. There are three spirits that can operate in or through people's lives. The Holy Spirit, the human spirit, or evil spirits. Which spirit is operative in a person or a situation is not always clear in the natural. The gift of discernment of spirit gives us spiritual insight to discern which spirit is at work so that we can deal with it appropriately. For example, if it's an evil spirit, we can resist and rebuke it, as we see the example in Matthew 16, verse 23. We can read from Matthew 16, verse 23. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God but on the things of man. Then I will read something that Robert Brandt said. Discerning of spirits is a special ability given by the Holy Spirit to look beyond what ordinary men see. When a spirit is manifesting itself, it is the true ability to know by which spirit a man is speaking or acting. And it is important to pray that the Holy Spirit will give us a discernment of spirits. To discern with, when it's an evil spirit, when it's your own thoughts. Or even to discern the Holy Spirit working. And the Lord will sharpen us in the spirit. And through the working of the gifts, he feeds and sustains his body. And he keeps us in shape in this way because we we remain fit and we are effective in the spirit because the lord can achieve his purpose in and through us and this is the grace that everything which happens is in love and is for the upbuilding of the church and to his glory i believe that you could receive um, something of worth from this teaching we are excited for the rest of the Bible study. Let us close our eyes in prayer. Lord, thank you for this grace that your spirit is with us. You said that you are going away to prepare a place for us, but you are not leaving us as orphans, but you leave your spirit with us, the spirit which will guide us in all truth. Thank you for the truth setting us free. Thank you that your name is glorified through this, that you will strengthen and bless everyone where they are tonight. 
and doing introspection, thinking how many times in disbelief we resisted your spirit, that we will make right with you to give you free reign in our lives and that we will also submit under the spiritual authority that you put on earth. Thank you that you will bless everyone and that you will bless us in this week and with a good night's rest as well. We bless everyone in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. We pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you that you have tuned in with us. May you have a blessed evening and have a good night's rest. May the Lord bless you.